Hey everybody, this is Shepard here with a pretty in-depth tutorial on poison in Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, should be some good information here because we'll begin Camellios at the end of the month. Just to know about status, uh, poison specifically does a certain amount of damage per tick. Seems to be 14 for the most part in low rank. Uh, you get a certain total number of ticks which times the damage per tick is your total damage. Uh, note that we're using a light bow gun and the light bow gun has a fixed amount of status it does per shot, so we'll be counting the total number of shots there. If you're using a blade master weapon, you have a random chance in order to inflict uh, element, whatever your listed element is. It's In previous games, it's been 33%. Haven't tested it here. And so we're going to go and get started. So we're starting with zero star monsters. Uh, these are zero star on the character cards, weaknesses. Uh, Great Ragi unexpectedly takes a lot of poison to in order to be inflicted and takes almost no damage. Uh, Bishatin again. So, Great Ragi, by the way. Uh, excellent raw hit zones. No sense using poison on him. Bishatin, uh, likewise, pretty good hit zones. No surprises here. No real need to use poison on this guy. Uh, he does occasionally drop his, his fruit, which will inflict poison on him pretty quickly, so... I guess you want free 210 damage if he's dropped this fruit. You can go ahead and use those on him, but otherwise I wouldn't go out of your way to use poison. Pookie Pookie being a poison monster and with great raw hit zones, unsurprisingly at zero star is, is not really worth using it on. Maybe in Rampage if he shows up. But even still, with, with such a high tolerance requiring 10 shots, so in the past that would normally be about 250 status. It's just, it's just too much. Next up is Rathian. Uh, I didn't go through and test this over and over again. For some reason, I only count 14 ticks. I'm not sure if I missed one here, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're still not going to use poison on her. She's got an excellent head hit zone for, for every weapon. Otherwise, you could attack her legs, make her trip, and then no attack her head in that way, I guess. Uh, Rajang? Um, you know, if he's facing away from you in his normal mode, I guess? He still takes pretty good damage all over. You certainly wouldn't bring a Blade Master weapon to poison him. I could see maybe one infliction being okay if you literally have nothing else to do in the dog gun. Rathalos makes no sense to use poison on him. Uh, again, unless he's just like way outside of your shot range, you want to use poison on him that way. Certainly, don't bring any poison blade master weapons on him. Not for 10 shots at 210 damage. It's not great. Uh, Rakta Kadachi, honestly, seeing as she doesn't really take damage from anything, I could see there being some value and getting one infliction out of here, especially at long range. Any amount of true damage on her is, is fine because she doesn't really take much damage from anything, be it element or raw. So I wouldn't bring poisoned weapons to her necessarily, but, but one infliction on a gun is, is fine. Now we're into the one star monsters. Uh, Royal Ludroth, I would argue, is less weak to poison relative to some of the other one-star monsters. So, again, I wouldn't bring poison weapons here, but one infliction is, is maybe okay if you've got, you know, the dog bow gun or something else that is very good at using poison. Uh, Girototus, on the other hand, uh, takes, takes pretty good damage. You know, uh, pretty good thunder hit zones, but honestly, at only six shots and getting 280 damage, uh, with all the diving that that he does, if you had a particularly good poison weapon, I don't I don't think this would be a bad choice. Um, there 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 are worse choices for sure. Certainly with Camellia's weapons, it should be fine. Uh, Kuluyaku, his entire body is a weak hit zone, <laughs> especially his head. So even though it's one star, I would I would say this is not. Not a real situation you want to be using poison. Again, outside of maybe like one one initial application. And again, certainly you would not be bringing any, any poison weapons, poison melee weapons to this fight. 
Uh, Acnesom, you know, I can't say I've I fought enough Acnesom to really say. Uh, does feel like the head is always in front of you and takes amazing damage. So even though Acnesom takes the same poison damage or, or roughly the same poison damage as Girototus, doesn't doesn't seem like something you'd really go out of your way to to use on him. So maybe skip this one. Uh, Volvodon, on the other hand, has kind of bad hit zones for shot. So this is one where, especially if you're a gunner, uh, I might even bring combines for poison on this one because outside of his, what is it, his rickrack, he doesn't really take much damage anywhere. As for actual melee weapons, um, you know, it's good enough. Good enough that you'll you'll probably see some some notable damage over time. Not the worst. Great baggy. Walking weak spot for both cutting and blunt and, and shot damage. So again, even though there's you know, on the higher end of poison damage for one stars, I, I wouldn't say this is something that I'd particularly go out of your way in order to use poison on. It is kind of fun using status against things that are trying to use status against you, though. Um, okay, damage here, but, you know, Tetranodon, however the hell you say his name, he's got so much life that I think by the end of the fight, the scaling would probably get to the point where you probably would have been better off using Element or something else anyways. And his, his hit zones aren't bad either, especially when he bloats up and, and sticks his stomach out. He takes really good damage from just about everything, so probably a pass. Uh, Somnicanth? Huh? <laughs> Again, one of those monsters that's like a walking head for the most part, so... Definitely on the better end of the one-star monsters. Still probably not something I'd, I'd go out of my way to use. Only because it's like... Especially with getting flinches and stuff like that, you, you really want to be able to do actual damage to the head in order to get a flinch and knock it over. You know, in a way, Baryoth is, is similar in that not that you're necessarily trying to flinch him out of anything, but you really want your elemental or blast damage or, or whatever to help break his wings in order to make the fight a little bit more manageable. And poison isn't really going to do that for you. So, again, even though he's on the weaker end of one star in terms of taking only six shots for the first infliction, not something I go out of my way for. Magnamaldo is similar. Uh, to something that you'd really want to flinch. On the other hand, he has pretty bad shot hit zones. So an argument could be made to going a little out of your way to poisoning him whenever he doesn't have Hellfire up. So just an idea there could be okay at times. Apparently takes better thunder damage on his Hellfire than water, which is interesting. Uh, Mitsu is one of those monsters where you want, really want to do as much damage as possible to the head in order to get topples. So again, while the damage is good, you, you still want to be focusing, you know, your blast, your element, just your full raw damage in order to make this fight more manageable and, and get those trips and, and do more damage over time. Definitely on the weaker end, though. Uh, Anjanoth kind of falls in the same tier more or less and it's weird because he's he's a brute wyvern normally brute wyverns would take a lot more damage from poison than than what you see here historically but again especially when he gets enraged and his his mouth starts spewing fire you want you know raw damage or or water damage in order to help pop him over uh nargakuga um you know if you're a gunner Nargakuga doesn't really take much gunning damage from anything. It takes okay thunder damage now. So an argument could be made to bring poison in order to make the fight a little bit more manageable. I still think you'd rather focus on slicing and maybe even cluster or stickies in order to help break the wings if you needed those parts. Uh, Gasarag, um, on the weaker end of poison, but same deal. Whenever he makes his ice blades, you want to be configured in such a way to be able to deal as much damage as possible. Not only do they take pretty decent damage, they also cause them to topple over in order to make another opportunity to deal more damage. So, one thing to consider there. Uh, definitely on the better end of damage, though. Uh, Tigrex, um, you know, 
takes okay gunning damage, definitely blade master damage everywhere. Similar deal as Barry off, but, but to a little bit of a lesser degree in that breaking the wings will cause a topple. And they take okay-ish damage. They don't take great damage, but they take okay-ish damage. So, you know, element or slicing or blast would probably be better to use on him than, than using poison. Uh, Almadron? Uh, don't. He's got pretty good hit zones all over. So whether they're slicing or gunning, I don't know that that this shot damage is going to help quite as much. He does do some digging. So there's a little bit of a benefit there that while he's doing this dumb animation where he's getting ready to lay in his hot tub, you get a little bit of extra damage while he's doing that. So I guess there's one small consideration for that. Uh, Zenogre, I mean, doesn't take great elemental damage, at least not until he's enraged. Mm, case could be made for it, you know, uh, even... Even as a Blade Master, again, this is relatively low tolerance and, and reasonable damage. Big issue is, though, is you really want to be able to, like, stun his head and do stuff like that in order to get him out of his rage mode. Sometimes, at least, depending on whether you're speedrunning or not. And so the, the poison doesn't really help you there. Uh, Diablos has amazing shot hit zones and amazing elemental hit zones for ice. So even though Poison's doing okay damage there, uh, doesn't help you break the horns, and it's not ice, and it's not just pure gunner damage. So uh, even though there is occasional digging, I don't, I don't see it being a a massive benefit. So I think this is the last one for one star. Now we're coming up to three star. I don't know that anyone is coming to this guide to find out. <laughs> How to deal additional poison damage to Great Azuchi. Um, I mean, it takes good damage. I mean, it's 350 damage and the tolerance is basically nothing. Even though the body is a walking hit zone. Um, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. That's all I'm going to say. I, I wouldn't... I don't know. Uh... Now this guy, Arzaros, for Gunners, I, I could see it being a little bit better. He's got kind of awkward shot hit zones. Certainly if you're a Blade Master, you want to be hitting his butt. But I don't think his butt really has good... I don't think he's got good elemental weaknesses back there. So so maybe a poison weapon would be the way to go. Uh, could be some consideration for when we get Apex Arzaros. Uh, not saying it for sure, but definitely something to check into. If we ever have him as a standalone fight. Not in a Rampage. Uh, for gunners against Legambi, I would I would recommend bringing poison. You know, unless you've got probably what it would what would it be rapid fire shot, not even rapid fire piercing, uh, but just poison. Doesn't have very good shot hit zones unless you're really good at hitting the head. So uh, pretty good, pretty good solution here. Now again, it's still just a Legambi, <laughs> but uh, the damage is enough that I, I would say it's absolutely worth doing. Uh, probably two, maybe even three applications. Now, Barath is an interesting monster. He doesn't have uh, consistent elemental weaknesses. He takes more water on his mud, and he takes more fire when he doesn't have mud. And his weak spot is really his tiny little hands. And he doesn't have much life overall. So I would say for Blade Master and for Gunner, um, in between doing slicing shots on his hands, uh, Poison is a really good choice here. Again, it's still just a bear off, but... Uh, important to know in case we ever get an Apex one. Uh, Kezu uh, obviously takes great fire damage, has decent hit zones on its head, but, you know, uh, tail doesn't take much damage, uh, legs doesn't don't take much damage, body is not great. Definitely, if you're scared of him, uh, poison is is absolutely worth using. This is good damage. This is this is okay. If you if you're having a hard time hitting the head, if he's you know, facing away from you if he's on the ceiling or anything else. And if you want to consider using poison instead of element, it works. Hey, okay, Toby Kadachi. Toby Kadachi only takes 20 water damage on his tail. Which is good water damage, but it does it is not enough to proc elemental weakness or elemental exploit. So I think there there could be an argument here. Uh, you know, if there's whatever weapon class you're using, if there's a really good poison weapon and there's not really a great water weapon. This could be, like, one of your bigger findings from this video, being like, oh, if I'm going to farm out Toby, for whatever reason, 
Uh, maybe I'll bring a, a poison weapon instead. I, I really think that damage will add up. Now, finally, our secret four-star poison weakness monster of the video. They say he's one star, but he's really not. Bazarios. Obviously, until his chest is broken or if he's heated up, he doesn't really take up damage anywhere. But poison, even though it's hard to inflict, does a total of 490 damage. It's crazy, and, and kind of for my testing, and I, I haven't done it super objectively, it does appear you can start building up poison into the next instance of it. So if you're using a poison melee weapon, uh, you can kind of just keep the poison train rolling. And the amount of damage that that does over the course of a hunt is actually pretty considerable. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to put together a Blade Master set. Uh, in this case, we're using a Rathian Switch Axe that has element file, but the element is poison. We're going to go ahead and do a hunt. And so we're going to show it off. We're going to show off poison as, as it does pretty good work against Bezerios. I'm just going to talk a little bit about poison. So... Poison's always been one of those things in the game where I think we saw it probably most used in world right at base game. Uh, there was gold Rathian weapons in that game that, you know, were just great raw weapons and they kind of had poison as a little bit of a benefit. One thing I really liked about Iceborne and world and one thing that I haven't really noticed here is occasionally like on a monster like Legiana, if you're to inflict poison on them, they would have this secondary effect of like kind of like coughing slash puking a little bit. It would be like a little bit of like a mini stun on them. And I'm a little disappointed because I, I haven't really noticed or seen that at all in Rise. And so while the fact that the damage appears to be at least better one for one against Blast in some situations, uh, I thought the micro stuns and stuff like that added to a lot of the the fun factor and versatility and, and usability of poison. So I don't know how often we have people from Capcom tuning into this channel. I don't know uh, if you do and you have any sway or influence uh, with the Rise developing team. Be like, hey, remember Legiana? That was neat. So even on monsters that aren't actually like weak to poison in the sense that they don't take very good damage, maybe consider start adding like little coughing animations again to some of the monsters in order to make it something that, you know, maybe more players want to bring with them. You know, maybe you're not doing damage in multiplayer, especially in four player scaled quests. The poison damage is going to be really small and everything but the most weak monsters in this game. But if you're to give give that coughing slash choking animation to them, you know, even then, even in multiplayer, I think you'll start seeing people like, oh, maybe this is a little bit more useful to run. As is, I think... It's a really interesting choice. Uh, obviously, Rathian Switch Axe here is not like... It's not a bad choice for a raw Switch Axe. It's got like 216 True Raw with blue sharpness. Poison File charges up relatively fast. I mean, it's obviously not like the highest damage Switch Axe in the game. Uh, not not by a long shot, but um, it's not that bad either. And against Bazarios, I think it probably is the absolute best option. And especially if, you know, we get like Daddy Gravios or something else like that, or we start finding, like, we get better Camellios weapons, like a, a Camellios Elemental File Poison Switch Axe, or Camellios just Poison File Switch Axe. Along with monsters that are weak to it, I, I think we, we could see something that's decent here. So, again, this is a fun little find that, you know, the, again, when you're looking at the guild card or the, the hunter's notes and you're looking at how weak a monster is to something, don't always take it at face value because I think what the intention was is when they said Bazarios was one star weak to poison, they didn't mean he didn't take damage from it. They're like, oh, it's a it's a little bit harder to inflict on him, right? So rather than it being six shots or eight, you know, it's eight shots. And so even though he takes almost 500 damage per infliction, you know, they thought, well... I guess he's technically not weak, which to me is crazy. 500 damage is, is pretty significant. I mean, that's that's more than two large barrel bombs, uh, large barrel bomb pluses even with a sleep. So especially as you're constantly doing it, and especially because he does have animations, right, where he's digging and you can't actually hit him. It seems pretty useful. And you can see we're, we're really getting these poisons off a lot. I haven't exactly counted, but three, 
maybe four over the course of the hunt? That's almost 2,000 damage, if it is four. And so we're, what, almost maybe a little under four minutes in. A little over four minutes in. He's already ready for capture. Not that anyone out there is speedrunning Bazarius. <laughs> But if you were, and you're a Switch Axe runner, eh, think about it. Maybe use it. If you're not a speedrunner, you need to farm him or you just like fighting him anyways, uh, definitely consider bringing poison. It's fun. Especially with Camellios coming up at the end of the month and especially because, you know, who knows when they start adding more poison weak monsters on the same skill of Bezerios. Uh, definitely worth considering. About to show off the set. I'm going to show it off once we get to the guild. I want to mention, if you like this video, stream every day over at twitch.tv slash sdshepard. Just watching me. Best way to help keep these videos coming. Not going to not gonna throw a, a sponsor in here. Not going to throw in like a Patreon or anything. Just uh, just watching on Twitch is all, all I'd ever ask for you. And if you want to comment or like this video or subscribe, that'd be cool too, I guess. But no pressure there. So we got attack boost there. Uh, we went for attack 7, critical I7, mostly because, obviously, weakness exploit is not reliable. Maxed out our poison attack, maxed out our grinder to keep the sharpness up in blue as best we can. And, uh, yeah, try it out sometime. I think, I think you'll have a lot of fun. But otherwise, until next time, this is Shepard. I love you. Until next time, good luck. Have a good hunt.